Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use flex boxes inside of Wix Studio. Let's go ahead and get started. So here I am inside of Wix Studio and to find the flex boxes, you can come up to the add panel, go down to layout tools, and you'll see an option down here under advanced called flex boxes. Now you'll have a couple different options here to choose from. And I think for today's video, we're gonna start off with this one right here. Now, the first thing that you're gonna notice is that it is one little element right here with several different items inside of it. And if I use the breadcrumbs and select the flex box again, you'll easily be able to tell that I can add an item if I want to. So now we have a fourth item here. You'll also notice that by default, the one that we chose it was set to rows. So if we press this little drop down, we can either choose columns, mosaic, bricks, slider, and slides. Now I am gonna get into these in just a minute, but before I do that, I do want to kind of explain a few things about this Flexbox element. Firstly, if we want to, we could stretch this to a section if we wanted to. We could also, if we have different cells or grids, we could even stretch it just to the cell or grid element. Another thing that I would like to mention is with the flex boxes, we can control the height and we can control the width. Inside of it, we can control the height of individual items if we wanted to. And this sometimes also depends on which one we have selected. So if I go to columns and I select on an item, you'll notice I cannot change the width or height. So whatever layout you choose can sometimes dictate what all you can control within the Flexbox. Now, if you're familiar with Wix and its tools, then this may look something similar to repeaters. So if I just grab a repeater really quickly, I want to notice a couple key differences between the layouter and the repeater. For a repeater, every single item inside of it has to have the same exact design or at least the same elements inside of the design. For example, if I add a text element, let's just add a very simple paragraph here, you'll notice that every single other item in the repeater also has this paragraph. Now, the contents of the paragraph can be different in each item, but every single item without a doubt has a paragraph element. But with layouters, the design can be completely different for each item. If I add a paragraph field in this one right here, and then maybe in the top one, I wanted to add an image, I could do that with a layouter. Another key difference right now is repeaters are typically used to connect to CMS or databases within different collections on your website. However, flex boxes, you'll notice we don't have the CMS option here. Now we can connect certain elements inside the flex box to CMS, but the flex box itself is not here to be connected to CMS. But now that we have a general idea about flex boxes, let's go ahead and switch this over to columns. So now we should have something that looks like this. The first thing I want to do is with the flex box selected, I want to come down to layout and I want to note that depending on which layout you choose, these settings that you can change for the layout are gonna be different for each one of these. So for columns, we can choose the direction. So right now it's set to left to right. However, if I switch this, the image should be over here and the blue should be over here. So let's just test it out. You can see that's exactly what it does, perfect. For equalize, right now, all of our items are the same exact width. So if I grab this one right here, I come up to size, and maybe we want this one to be a little bit thicker. Maybe that's the design that we're going for. Well, maybe we change our mind here on tablet. So maybe on tablet, we can actually press equalize, and all of the columns will be the same exact width. I also wanna note, that here on desktop, we may want columns, but maybe here on tablet, we wanna try rows. And because we switch it to rows here, it's gonna be rows here on mobile. However, if we go back up to desktop, it's gonna stay as the columns, how we originally set it. Just because with Wix Studio, everything cascades downwards, not upwards. 
So everything we do on desktop will affect tablet and mobile, but everything we do on tablet will only affect mobile and anything we do on mobile will only affect mobile. And then of course, under item proportions, there is gaps. So because we have columns and we don't have rows, we won't have the option to add a vertical gap. We can only add a horizontal gap. So maybe we want 24 pixels of spacing here. But now let's go ahead and switch over the display type over to rows. Now, similar to what I was showing you earlier, we can easily adjust the height of it here. We can also adjust the height of it by setting a minimum value here. And we can use a responsive value if we want to. Maybe we want this to be like 22 VW in height. And I think that looks pretty clean. But as for the other options here, for the layout, we can you do a vertical gap. So we'll do 24 pixels. We can switch this over to a responsive value. And that's really all we really need to do for the rows. So we can adjust the height here and we can adjust the gap and design the rows however we want. Now let's switch over to mosaic. When we create a mosaic layout, it does exactly what you think it would do. However, if you want to change the width of different items, you can grab the item itself, come over to the width, and maybe we want this one to be like 60% width. And you'll notice that because this one is set to 60% width, and this one is set to 60% width, it just went ahead and put both of these on its own row. However, if I go ahead and switch this one to maybe be 30, you can see that this one is taking up 60%, and this one is taking up 30%. Now, of course, that did kind of mess up the paragraph just a little bit, but that's a pretty easy fix. And maybe we want to switch these around as well. So I'm gonna set this one to 60, and I'll set this one to 30. And the cool thing is, is we can completely customize these however we want, just like we can with a section. We can even put things like repeaters inside of a layouter if we wanted to do something like that. So just about anything from the editor, we can put inside of these Flexbox items. But let's go ahead and check out the different layout options for the mosaic. Once again, we can change the direction from left to right to right to left. For the item width, right now we have a mix. For example, this one's 60, this one's 30, and then this one's 30 and this one's 60. If we wanted them all to be even, we could just set these to 45 if we wanted to do that. I really don't want to do that, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo. For the gap, here we can set a 24 pixel gap for the horizontal and vertical. I think that looks pretty good. And that's all these settings for the mosaic. Now let's go ahead and switch over to bricks. And bricks is kind of just pushes everything to the left and kind of still gives us that mosaic vibe, but it doesn't fill the container fully like the mosaic did. Once again, for the design, we can switch it from right to left, from left to right to right to left, but you'll also notice it moved the boxes to the right. Same thing, we can adjust the item width if we wanted to. So maybe we want 32 for all of them. But again, I don't really want it to do that. As usual, we can set the gap. And then here is for the alignment. So right here, we have it aligned to the start. So if I go ahead and set this to the end as right to left, you'll notice it moves it to the left. However, if I move the direction left to right and the alignment is set to the end, it's gonna move it to the right. Another option is we can do center. So it's going to just center the items here. We also have space between. So it's gonna push the items to the left and the right. And then there's just gonna be a bunch of space between. And last but not least, we have space around and that kind of evens the amount of space on the left and right of each of the items plus the 24 gap. So this, this area looks a little bit bigger. If I was to remove the gap here, maybe not for the bottom one, then you'll kind of notice that like the amount of space that's in between the edge of the flex box and the first item is kind of the same here. And then same thing with this one. So like this gap looks a little bit bigger, uh, but in reality, it's just the gap for both of these items together here. I will say typically people will just use this one right here with a little bit of a gap. But I also will just say like most people don't use the bricks layout, but it is cool to kind of have this as an option. Next we have slider. So just as you would expect when people, people can easily just scroll through the different options here and you can edit each one of these just by scrolling in the editor to each of the items and designing it however you want. Now for the layout options, as usual, we have the direction for item width. We can set the item width to maybe be 60%. And you'll notice that that's gonna bring in whatever the next item in, it's gonna take up a little bit more space. 
So if you want to do like 90%, you'll notice it's it's only showing 10% of the next item. Of course, we have the gap here, and this one's only gonna be a horizontal gap. Then we have a scroll snap align. So right now we don't, so I can stop it right here if I wanted to. I can stop it right here, I can stop it here. It doesn't really matter. However, if I go ahead and turn this to the start of the item, when I go ahead and preview the website and I scroll, even just a little bit, it's going to snap us to the next item. We also have a center option here, which this one's actually pretty cool. If I go ahead and scroll, you'll see 5% of it, of this item over here, 5% of this one, and this one shows up in the center. And I think that's a really cool design layout for these flex boxes as well. Underneath that, we have end. Now it's basically just like start, just the other way around. So we see it a little bit there, and that's, that's all the end one really does. And last but not least, we have the scroll bar option. So when I'm scrolling through this, you can see the little scroll bar here at the bottom. Show scroll bar, if you toggle this off, this will mean you will not see the scroll bar when people are scrolling through it. Um, that's all that means. But now let's go ahead and switch over to slides. This one is pretty similar to the one we just saw. Again, people can slide through the different options here if they want to. And of course we have the directional arrows, but we can change the amount of items per slide. So if we wanted three items per slide, we could just set this to three. But the cool thing about slides is we can actually add navigation. So if I come over to here to add, we can either add arrows, buttons, or text. Typically, I like to do arrows just because I think it looks a little bit cleaner. And when I click on this little arrow right here, we can of course change the shape if we wanted to. But the cool thing is, is we can actually kind of set this outside of the flex box by maybe setting this as a negative 5%. And let's go ahead and do that for this one over here on the left-hand side. Too. So now we have this little flex box. And if I click on this arrow, it kind of moves things over. Now I feel like it'd be a little bit more apparent if with the flex box, I have it only set to two items per row or maybe even one, let's just do one. So people can just go ahead and flip through the different slides very easily with the flex box navigation arrows. To me, I think that's a really, really cool effect. And of course, just like the slider display type, we can turn off the scroll bar so people can just kind of scroll through it without seeing a scroll bar. So as you can see, flex boxes are a fantastic way for you to be able to create really cool interactions on your website. And here is actually a live example of a Flexbox in use, including this little grid system right here. So of course you can create two little call to actions here and then have like a big one down below. And even inside of their own footer, you could create the same exact thing using a Flexbox. But that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's quick little video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix and Wix Studio content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I will see you on the next one.